If you're interested in automating your room cleaning with Home Assistant and your S7 Max V Ultra, then this video is for you. In this 15 minute video, I'll take you through integrating the RoboRock into Home Assistant, picking through the diagnostic files to make sure you can work out how to do your individual room cleaning, turning that information into an automation and then integrating it into a dashboard. By the end of this video, you'll be able to clean any room in your house at a click of a button within Home Assistant. Hi everyone, my name is Paul. Welcome to Project Smart Home. So in this video, I'm going to be talking you through the integration of RoboRock, uh, my RoboRock S7 Max V Ultra into Home Assistant. So I'll be going through the integration process and then I'll be going through the fairly complex process of getting the automations to work. So we've got to have a look through the config files, the diagnostics files to get the RoboRock room configuration and room numbers. And then we can go on and start to create some automation. So I'll show you how to do that. I'll take you through how I've created an automation and how I'm using buttons to surface those automations up into Home Assistant and then I'll finish off by showing you how I've added the uh, S7 into the dashboard. Thanks for watching, enjoy the video. In this section then I'll take you through how to add the RoboRock integration into Home Assistant. So the assumption here is that you've obviously got Home Assistant up and running, you've also got the RoboRock app up and running and all of your rooms are configured. So first thing you need to do then is go into settings, add integration, type in RoboRock, search for RoboRock, select that, and then enter your email address and activation key. So once you've entered your email address, you'll be sent an activation key, which will then allow you, allow you to complete the integration. Here I'm just selecting the room that my RoboRock is in. It's in the dining room, which is off the side of the kitchen. So once the integration's up and running, you'll be able to then have a look at the device and have a look at what controls and sensors, configuration and diagnostics information that you've got access to. We'll have a look at the documentation in a minute. But a quick look at the entities. There's 15 different entities that are activated when you configure the integration. And then from a documentation point of view, it very much says that the integration is in development. So I think the interesting thing is what features will you support? So a question to the Home Assistant team. So we're working on adding a lot of features to the core integration. We have reverse engineered over a hundred commands. The documentation is currently very bare bones and we are looking for users to help us to complete, to, to make this more complete. The following are some of the functionalities we plan to add to Home Assistant Core. So selective room cleanings coming, dock controls, manual, vacuum remote control, status information such as errors, clean time, consumables, viewing the camera and viewing the map. The bit that I'm going to go through with you today is the how I can clean a specific room. So we're going to have a look at the diagnostics and log information to see if we can work out how that all works. And we'll do that next. In this section of the video then, I'm going to take you through how to decipher the logs to get the RoboRock room information. So the first thing we need to do is go into the RoboRock integration and we're going to have a look at the documentation. So at the bottom of the documentation, it's how can I clean a specific room? So um, it's a fairly complex process that we need to go through to get this working, but uh, I've managed to do it. So I'll use this section of the video to show you how to do it. So the first thing we need to do is enable debug logging. But what you need to do is make sure that you've got RoboRock set up, you've got your app set up, 
or your rooms configured before you even start this process. So that needs to be fully complete before you even go into this. So once we've got the debug logging enabled, what I found is that I needed to reload the service to get some of the information to come through with the debugging switched on. Once we've got that, then we can actually go and ha start to have a look at the logs and start to retrieve some of the information. These are the logs then that have been downloaded. So we're gonna have a look at these now to see if we can start to get the information we need. So I'm gonna keep flipping between the logs and the documentation just so we can follow what we're supposed to be doing. So the first thing we need to do then is do a search in the logs for got home data. Make sure you don't include the quotes around the outside. You're just looking for that, 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 those, that three word statement. And there we have it. So if we scroll down, we should then be able to see the rooms that I've got configured in my RoboRock application on my mobile phone. So those are, the, those are the rooms and those are the IDs for the rooms that are configured. So we'll come back to this in a minute, but we need to get some more information first. So we're gonna leave that log file open. So we need to run another command. We need to go into developer tools services and execute the send command for vacuum. For developer tool services, vacuum send command. I can spell. Selecting my RoboRock S7 Max V entity. And then we need to execute get room mapping. So what this actually does then is shows us the two character room number and the mapping to the room ID. And we'll see that in a minute. So we call the service. So that should now have updated our logs with the room mapping information. And then we need to compare the two sets of data. So I've left debugging enabled so we should just be able to download a new set of log diagnostics so we're going to open up another instance of the log file just so we can compare between the two and we're looking for that statement again that we executed so the get underscore room underscore mapping so we need to find that in the log file. And there it is. So we can now, you can see below there, the, the number value for the room. So we're gonna compare those now. So if we look at that one, which ends in 4115 room 17, so four, one, one, five, room 17 is my family room. So if I want to vacuum the family room in my automation, I need to use the numeric value of 17. And we'll go through that shortly. So I'm just double checking family room four, one, one, five. So going back to the instructions, just to see what we need to do next. So we can now execute a run command to get the vacuum cleaner to go off and clean my family room, which is room 17. So the API command that's being run
is app underscore segment underscore clean and then we're telling it to to, um, to vacuum room 17 which as we know is my family room so I'm now just double checking the sample code that's in the documentation against, against the YAML code that I've got on my screen so I'm calling the service we get a tick so it's executed so we know if that's completed successfully now that we know how to retrieve the room information we can get on and create an automation so what I'm going to do first is I want to use buttons on my dashboards in home assistant to initiate a clean so what I'm going to do is create an automation to to get the robo rock to clean my master bedroom so the first thing I'm going to do is create a button helper to enable us to do that and there it is I'm going to use that in the automation shortly so if we now go into settings automations and create a new automation so we're going to use our button state to initiate a clean so I need to make sure I choose the right thing so clean master bedroom button any state change so as soon as somebody clicks on that button it's going to initiate uh, an automation so again we're going to have to make sure that we're referring back to the that documentation and that sample code that's within that to make sure that we get this right So if you look at that sample code there, it's service vacuum send command. And then the command itself that you need to execute is app underscore segment underscore clean. So I'm just having a look at it in YAML just to make it easier to compare against the sample code that's in the documentation. I'm just going to go through and copy that code, add in parameters, and then the segments that we want to clean. So you can see on the example, you can set up one button to clean multiple rooms. And I, I have done that for parts of my house. Um, but in this example, I'm only using one segment, one room number. So I've just, uh, I'd forgotten to select the target which is the robot vacuum cleaner so I've just gone back into UI mode and added that in and now I can add the segment so obviously I don't know the segment number at this stage so I need to go back to my logs it might actually be easier to put this information into a spreadsheet so you don't have to keep flipping between the logs all the time but uh, I need to find the master bedroom so there's the, the readable text for it so we know it ends in 4177 so I'll go to the other copy of the logs that I've got open and look for a number ending in 4117, which is there. So we now know that my master bedroom is room 21. So that's the number that I need to use in the automation. I'm just double checking it again to make sure I've got the right number. Add 21 in there, and then this automation will go off and clean that room. And in this case, I've decided to get it to repeat the, the process twice. Name the automation so it's ready to now be integrated into the dashboard. So you can see I've got three others set up already for my kitchen and dining room, which has got two segment IDs in and then I've got two other rooms set up as well already so I'm adding the button into my horizontal stack in my dashboard in home assistant 
So I now need to find my master bedroom button. Not the automation, but the button. Give it a more sensible name so I know what it is, know which room it's going to vacuum. And at this stage, it's essentially ready to go. As I add more rooms onto this map, then it'll look a, look a bit prettier, but that's it. The last section that I wanted to talk through is just uh, adding the RoboRock vacuum cleaner to the dashboard. So I've got my RoboRock in my dining area. So I'm just going to add the S7 RoboRock into the dashboard here. So obviously go into the, uh, editing the dashboard, adding a new card. There's um, a vacuum card there that I'm going to make use of. I want to see when it's active and I'm just going to enable all the different features just so I can have a play around with them. I'll move it closer to the top so it looks a bit better. So from a settings point of view we can see that the status is docked, it's 55% charged, we can do something there with the fan speed. We can start, pause, stop. We can do a clean spot. We can locate the vacuum cleaner and we can return it to home. I hope you found the video useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any comments or thoughts, please leave them below. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.